everybody. I'm John from Craft Music, and I'm here today with the Korg Minilog Polyphonic Analog Synthesizer. For a great deal on the Minilog, please check out our bundles at craftmusic.com. Minilog is, in the broadest strokes, four-note polyphonic with two analog oscillators per voice. There's both an arpeggiator and an onboard step sequencer, as well as uh, patch storage for up to 100 user programs, with each program also including its own step sequence. In addition to the low-pass filter, there's also a high-pass filter that's coupled with a tape-style delay. Minilog comes to us from Korg's dynamic duo of Tata and Tots. That's head of product planning Tadahiko Sakamaki, lead analog engineer Tatsuya Takahashi, and the rest of the team that brought us, among other things, the Monotrons and the Monotribe, the MS-20 and ARP Odyssey recreations, and the popular Volca series. This is a team that has some tremendous experience under their collective belt, uh, not just with recreating iconic vintage instruments in their entirety, as with the Odyssey and the MS-20, but also with reusing vintage circuits as they've seen fit, as they did when they used the Mini Korg 700S filter in the Volca keys. That said, uh, their mission with the Mini Log was to create an entirely new synth that doesn't rely on the name or cachet of a vintage synth. Uh, as Korg puts it, a synth designed today for musicians today. And while uh, many of the controls here will be immediately comfortable and familiar to anyone who's used a polyphonic analog synth before, there are some new and truly unique features that set Minilog apart. Starting with the physical design, we have the same 37-note slim keyboard that was in uh, both the ARP Odyssey and the MS-20 Mini. Um, these are not full-size keys, but they are not traditional mini keys either. They're more of a scaled-down full-size key. And if you're not familiar with this keybed from the Odyssey or the MS-20 Mini, it has to be said that this is a much more playable keybed than traditional mini keys. Minilog strikes a great balance of sturdiness and portability and cuts a pretty striking figure with this sandblasted, slightly curved aluminum top panel and the real wood back. On the rear panel, we have a quarter inch headphone out as well as the main audio output and an external audio input so that you can run other synths or drum machines or any other instruments through Minilog's filters and effects. We have five pin DIN MIDI in and out as well as a USB port and eighth inch jacks for Korg's Volca style audio based sync standard which can be found in an ever-growing list of products, including uh, not just the Volcas, but the SQ-1 Step Sequencer, the newer Electribes, the Monotribe, and its companion Sync Control iOS app. On the top panel, there are 41 knobs and switches for various synth voice parameters. Uh, there are some under the hood features, but pretty much all the important parameters are given their own dedicated control with no multi-function knobs or context switching. As I mentioned, Minilog does have patch memory, uh, which brings up the familiar dilemma of how to handle knob movements, and Korg does give you a global control over knob behavior. There's a setting where uh, parameters can jump immediately to the value you're dialing in. There's a catch or pickup or pass-through setting where the knob can pick up the value as it passes through it, or there's a scaled behavior um, where the changes you make will uh, scale relative to the initial value that you have stored. There's also a key combination to instantly load the current state of the panel. There's a small OLED display here, which serves some obvious purposes like uh, parameter display and feedback, as well as getting at some of the under the hood functions. Um, but then because it's a high resolution display with a really fast refresh rate, Korg has also set it up to act as an oscilloscope, which is uh, novel, but not mere novelty. Uh, it actually comes in really handy during sound design, as we'll see as we get into the oscillator section. As I mentioned earlier, Minilog is a resolutely new and modern synth, and all of the synth circuitry has been designed from scratch, including the oscillators, which use phase switching to allow wave shapes on all the different waveforms. For each of the two oscillators, we have controls to choose its octave, 
and then to choose among square, triangle, or sawtooth waves and to fine tune the pitch. And then each also has the sweepable shape knob, which um, on the square wave will affect the duty cycle or the pulse width, which will be familiar to many of us. But then where things get interesting is on the triangle and sawtooth waves, where the shape knob determines the uh, final shape and complexity of the waveform. And you can hear this uh, audibly and also watch it here on the oscilloscope as I sweep the knob on these two different waveforms. We also have a dedicated modulation section here just for VCO2. There's cross modulation with VCO1 modulating the pitch of VCO2 and a sweepable knob for the depth of that cross modulation. And then there's another knob here to uh, dial in the intensity uh, by which the envelope generator will affect the pitch of VCO2, which is interesting on its own and all the more so when you are doing uh, cross mod or hard sync between the two oscillators. And then we also have switches to enable hard sync. And also ring modulation with VCO1 uh, ring modulating VCO2. There's a mixer section with uh, level controls for each of the two oscillators, as well as for the built-in white noise generator, which is all the more useful on Minilog due to its particularly snappy envelopes, making it a uh, very useful percussion synthesizer. Speaking of the envelopes, we have two sets of ADSR controls. One is dedicated to the amp envelope, and while the other can control the low-pass filter, you'll notice that it's not specifically labeled filter EG, and that's because in addition to the low-pass filter, it can also be applied to the pitch of the second oscillator, as we mentioned just a moment ago, and also can control either the uh, rate or the depth of the LFO. The low-pass filter circuit is, like the rest of Minilog, an entirely new design. It's loosely based on Norton op amp filters and tuned to an open sound so that it complements the complex harmonics coming out of the oscillator section. As far as controls, in addition to a nice big cutoff knob, we have knobs for resonance and the envelope intensity. And then there are three switches. One is to switch between a two pole 12 dB per octave slope and a four pole 24 dB per octave slope. There's a switch to engage key tracking, which is actually a three position switch with a 50% setting in between full tracking and no tracking. And then there's another three position switch to control the extent to which velocity affects the filter cutoff, which is interesting on its own and can be heard particularly well here in a multi-note arpeggio.
Down here below the envelopes is our LFO modulation section with a switch to choose among sawtooth, triangle, or square waves for the LFO. There is also a switch to uh, invoke the parameter I mentioned earlier where the utility envelope generator can affect either the rate or intensity of the LFO over time. There are knobs for those same two LFO parameters for rate and intensity. And finally, there's a three position switch to uh, choose the target for the LFO, which in addition to the destinations you would expect for pitch and filter cutoff, has a third destination for the shape uh, parameter we mentioned earlier in the oscillator section. On a square wave, this will give you uh, pulse width modulation. And while I'm not sure what to call it, uh, complexity modulation, um, on the other two uh, wave shapes, you can also get a similar kind of effect. Over here are controls for the tape style delay. There are knobs for delay time and feedback and a sweepable knob for the high pass filter I mentioned that's coupled with the delay. There's also a three position switch uh, to control signal routing. In bypass, both the high pass filter and the delay will be disabled. Pre-filter means that the source sound is output ahead of the delay so that the high pass filter only affects your delay trails. And then finally, post-filter will run both the source signal and the delay trails through the high pass filter. which means that you could really uh, set the feedback to zero and just use this as a high pass filter as well. Down here next to the screen, there's a detented encoder that you use to scroll through presets and patches, as well as to uh, select and set various parameters in each of Minilog's three edit modes. In program edit mode, you can do things like name your patch, uh, set up weather and how the LFO is synced to clock, and also adjust portamento parameters. There's also a sequencer edit mode and a global edit mode where you can set things like master tuning and transpose, the knob behavior that I mentioned earlier, uh, choose among eight different velocity curves, and also set up both the polarity and the resolution of the Volca style sync engine and set various MIDI parameters. As I mentioned, Minilog has a 16 step step sequencer and there are some buttons here dedicated to entering and editing sequence information. Sequences can be entered in real time or per step and you can adjust settings during step entry or after the fact for note and gate time. Each save location for a user program can store step sequence information in addition to uh, synth voice information. So there's room to store up to 100 of your own uh, 16 step step sequences with each patch with its own BPM tempo setting. Like Korg's most recent Electribe models, you can also record and playback motion sequences to affect parameters other than pitch and gate time. There are four lanes for motion sequences, and then those can be turned on or off without deleting the sequence data. Motion sequences can be entered in real time by hitting record and then turning knobs and flipping switches while your sequence plays, or they can be entered manually for per step parameter lock style sequences. If you enter a motion sequence in real time, you can either leave it as is and have parameter values change sharply from one uh, step to the next like this. Or you can engage uh, what's called motion smoothing, which will 
uh, smooth out and interpolate between the steps that you enter and give it more of a smooth, real-time kind of feel. As we've worked our way across the panel, we've touched on some features that are uncommon or unique to Minilog. And since some of those are really cool, and since different features will appeal to different people, I don't want to say that we've saved the best for last. Uh, but the fact is that the voice mode is one of the most unique and interesting features. And it provides uh, different ways for you to arrange and address Minilog's four voices. In addition to these eight voice mode buttons here with their helpful diagrams, there's also this voice mode depth knob, which has different effects depending on which of the modes you're using. Let's take a look at each of those. Poly mode is the default, and as you'd expect, lets you play Minilog like a four voice polyphonic synthesizer. <laughs> In poly mode, the voice depth knob will invert a chord you play uh, further up the scale the further you turn the knob. <laughs> Duo mode will stack the four voices in uh, two pairs of two voices each and um, Turning the voice mode depth knob will increase the detuning effect between the two voices. Unison mode will stack all four voices into a single voice. And similar to duo mode, uh, turning the voice mode depth knob will increase or decrease the amount of detuning between the voices. At first glance, you might wonder uh, what's the difference between unison mode and mono mode. In mono mode, uh, Minilog will act as a mono synth with a sub oscillator. Uh, turning the voice mode depth knob part of the way will engage the second and third voices to act as a sub oscillator one octave lower, and then turning it even further will engage the fourth voice to be a second sub oscillator two octaves lower. This will be uh, a lot easier to hear if you're listening on a good pair of headphones or through a large pair of speakers. In chord mode, as you might expect, the four notes will be stacked to play one note chords. And the voice mode depth knob will let you choose different types of chords to play. And there are 14 different types to choose from. Delay mode, uh, not to be confused with the tape style audio delay we talked about earlier, which we have um, completely disengaged right now for this example. Uh, in delay mode, uh, it will use the second, third, and fourth voices as a sort of MIDI delay or a note level delay. And in this mode, turning the voice mode depth knob will increase and decrease the delay time in various uh, clock divided tempo synced increments. ARP is the arpeggiator mode. And the obvious advantage of running an arpeggiator on a polysynth as opposed to a monosynth is that on a polysynth, the various notes in your arpeggio will have time to actually decay and ring out. Mm -hmm. 
And when you're in art mode, uh, turning the voice mode depth knob will let you choose among 13 different arpeggiator modes, including uh, some up and down or rise and fall modes, as Korg likes to call them, and also uh, some poly modes, as well as a couple of random modes. You might be forgiven for assuming that sidechain mode would work uh, somehow with the external audio input, uh, some sort of sidechain compression scheme, but that's not the case. Instead, in sidechain mode, um, any new notes you play will duck any held or previously played notes, and uh, sweeping the voice mode depth knob will adjust the intensity of that ducking. A few other things to mention, there's this bendy guy here, which Korg calls the slider, and its mechanism and placement aren't the only things that make it uh, interesting or unique. Uh, what's great about this control is that in addition to obvious targets like uh, pitch or modulation intensity or even filter cutoff, this can be assigned to any one of 29 different parameters across the synth voice, including some uh, interesting destinations like LFO rates, uh, any of the parameters in the two envelope generators, delay timer feedback, uh, cross mod depth. You can even use it to sweep the voice mode depth knob that we were just discussing a moment ago. So lots of options. Minilog has a built-in oscillator tuning function, which comes on automatically when you first turn it on. And uh, should you be in the middle of a gig or something and find yourself concerned that pitch is drifting, you can also invoke this tuning function without having to power cycle it by uh, just pressing Shift and Record. There are some other useful Shift button combinations too, including one we mentioned earlier to quickly load all of the panel settings without having to go and touch each knob, uh, ways to quickly select steps in your sequence and adjust the step length, and then a couple of different ways to surf through uh, presets more quickly. Uh, there's one where holding shift and turning the knob will surf through in increments of 10, and then you can also use shift in combination with the voice mode buttons to set and quickly select up to eight favorites. As I mentioned, there are storage locations for up to 100 user programs, and then there are also uh, 100 factory presets, uh, many of which were programmed by Korg staff, presumably some of the development team, and some of which were also contributed by uh, Richard Devine and Jimmy Edgar. Uh, these factory presets can be copied to any of the user locations, and then once you've made a duplicate, you can easily uh, choose to strip out or reuse um, not only the synth voice information, but also if you want to just reuse uh, either the step sequence or the motion sequences that are programmed into each of those, you can choose to use those as well. Minilog has a robust MIDI implementation with CCs for all these parameters, as well as bank select and MIDI program change, SysX, and system real time. So that's the Korg Minilog, a thoroughly modern, portable, and affordable polyphonic analog synthesizer. If you're looking for a deal on the Minilog, be sure to check out our bundles at craftmusic.com. And as always, if you'd like to tweak one of our bundles or customize your own, be sure to get in touch with one of our sales advisors, and they'll be happy to give you a great deal on a custom package. Once again, I'm John from Craft Music. Thanks for watching.